Hello, this is Professor Ben Pewitt of the Fullerton College Printing Technology Department. Today, we're going to take a look at how to create a new document in InDesign with the intent of printing. When you first open InDesign, you'll have this splash page here. If you've been using it already, you'll of course have previous files that you've been using down at the bottom in the recent section. And you can change that to grid or list view, depending on how you like it. I like grid. It makes it easier for me to see what it did visually. But that's neither here nor there today because we're creating something new. So we'll go over to the left and click on Create New. And that opens up our little new document window. Note that I've turned on the preview at the bottom here. And that's going to allow us to take a look at what these things do, at least for the ones that become immediately visible. So let me pull out my little spotlight tool here. First off, we have document preset. I don't have any built onto my computer at this time because I do a lot of different designs at different sizes and I don't want to clutter it up with a bunch of pre-built things. Honestly, it doesn't slow me up that much not to have them, but the preset is there. So if you always make the same thing, like if you're a business card factory and you produce business cards of the same size for hundreds of clients a week, then maybe you just want to have that preset. So you don't have to go through and type in everything every time. Below that, we have the intent. Choose print. Print is the right answer for print classes. Print is the right answer for anything you want to produce because if you do web or mobile, the resolution will be too low and your color space will be wrong. Print sets you up with the resolution settings for output as well as the color settings intended for output to press. Also, just as an interesting note, if you didn't know this, InDesign is capable of producing web pages and also uh, capable of producing designs and layouts for mobile technology like tablets and phones. Again, it's different and what works in one place does not work in another. So make sure you choose print for a print project. Number of pages, you can put in as many pages as you want. There's a thousand pages. It'll do it. It'll slow your computer down a lot to have that many pages, especially once you start populating them with high resolution imagery. For now, I'll go back to one. Next to it is something called facing pages, which we're not gonna play with yet because it doesn't show up under the preview to show you what it's doing. I might circle back to it so you can get an idea of what it does. But let me tell you this at least, you don't have to worry about it. All it is is a view setting that changes how it displays the pages on your computer that you're working with. If you're working with one page, there is literally no difference between facing pages. If you're working with two pages, you start to see a difference. And if you do a book, you actually want it because it'll make life easier. But if I just tell you about it, it won't do any good. I'll have to show it to you once we're done setting this up. The start page number down here has to do with if you use the automatic page numbering system built into InDesign, what number should it start at? And if you're doing a really thick book, cough, restoration, hardware, cough, and you're not gonna do it in one go, and you're gonna do multiple smaller files to build it up because there are lots of high quality images in there, and they'll just take up too much memory for your computer to do a good job, then you might wanna start at different sections. You can do pages one through 25 and 26 through 50, et cetera, on down the line, depending on what kind of file sizes your system can handle. And that will vary based to sixes, uh, sixes. It will vary based off systems. Primary text frame, leave that unchecked. You don't wanna have a primary text frame. Then you're just using something that's not quite up to the level we should be doing. Page size. Under page size, I do have one that I made myself at the top here, and the ones you make yourself come at the top. I do a lot of five by seven cards, not enough to have a full preset, but it's a size that I find is helpful and handy in life. So I've made it and I've saved it as a pre-made page size. If I click on that, you can see the background change and the orientation and the uh, proportions change of that page back there that we're previewing because it's seven inches by five inches the way I like it in landscape. And that's just because I use it a lot. Any one of these that you choose that are pre-built, it'll take you to legal, tabloid, and those are in letter and letter and legal half. Those are all American, United States, I mean, paper sizes. The ISO A series and B series, the most common sizes are represented down here, A5, A4, A3. No, those aren't Audis, sorry guys. And down below, commonly US business cards and Compass discs covers were being done so much that Adobe added them to the presets. Isn't that nice of them? And you can do custom and set up your own custom. You're also able to, let's go back to letter for a moment here, do your own thing. And this is where it really starts to make a difference between this and a word processor program. 
a word on word processors like Microsoft Word, Google Docs, Star Office, Pages on Macintosh, all of those are designed to replace a real world device and do it digitally. They are typewriters. Their job is to help you type words, type sentences, and type paragraphs and pages of text and manage that text. They're there so you can type words and sentences, proofread, correct, change your grammar, change your spelling, and things like that. They're great for writing reports for school. They're great for writing reports for work. They are not graphics programs. They are the wrong tool for that job. This program, InDesign, is a page layout program. And page layout is much more like what they used to do to create print jobs called paste up. When I was a kid, my dad used to do paste up. And paste up is using exacto knives and rulers and rubber cement and other glues and tapes and adhesives to cut apart different pictures and different sections of text and glue them together to make comprehensive pages. Anyways, this is meant to create artistic layouts, not and uh, things that are intended for output, not just to type up your thoughts into a quick little document full of words. So all that is to say, if anyone has tried to make custom page sizes in Word, you understand what futility means. Over here in InDesign, let's just say I want to make it 11 and a quarter inches. Why not? I type it in and it is. And let's say the height, let's make this into a strip here. Instead of being the full size, let's make it half that size. I mean, first off, we could just do five inches or something, type in a five, and you'll see that it'll make the page 11 and a quarter by five. Why not? But let's do it better than this. 8.5 is the normal. Let's start out with eight and a half by 11 because it's kind of fun to cut a piece of paper and it might be easier to understand. Everybody knows that if you cut it in half, you get the five and a half by eight and a half. That's the hamburger fold, as they call it in uh, elementary school. But what if you want to cut the long way? So the 11 inches stays. Computers were originally designed to do math for us humans. Let's see if my computer can live up to its original purpose. So here we have eight and a half. Let's do divided by two. And look, four and a quarter. It does it just fine. That's great. Let's uh, go back here and let's do that slightly different. What if we want to divide by three over three? 2.833, you'll have to take its word for it that it's correct, or you can check your calculator, which your math teachers were wrong in elementary school. You do carry a calculator everywhere. Pop out the cell phones, do the math, you'll get the same number, 2.833. So all I'm trying to show you here is you can make it any size you want. You're not constrained by anything preset. The presets here help you. They're not here to hold you back. So let's move on down. Oh, you can also change the orientation. By clicking the orientation, you can change which way your page is facing, just like that. Columns and gutters, if you do multiple columns, let me move this a little bit so you can see. Multiple columns puts multiple columns on your page. Um, this is gonna make less sense. Let's go to a, an orientation where the columns will actually make sense. There you go. You can start to see the columns appear. Maybe this is starting to look kind of like a newspaper or a magazine to you, because that's what it's meant for. It's meant for helping you figure out where to put your text and images to align in those multiple columns per page that makes it easier to read. Now, another one of those differences between this and page layout is these lines we're creating, these columns and the gutter, by the way, as a moment, quick aside, the gutter is how much space between your columns. You can click the elevator buttons to go up and down by a 16th of an inch, or you can just type in a number. Anyways, these columns and gutters that we're making, these are only guidelines. You're not constrained by them. They're there to help you, not to keep you stuck inside. Anyways, there are ways of doing that where you are stuck, but this is just a guidelines. Same thing goes for margins. In Word and other page, uh, sorry, Word processing programs, the margins, which is the distance between the edge of the paper and where you start using it, that is a constraining box and you're stuck inside it. But here in InDesign, that doesn't bother us. For us, it's a guideline. We can set them wherever we want them, whatever's gonna be helpful. I like to set mine at about a quarter inch because typically speaking, most presses, you probably wanna leave a quarter inch space towards the edge of the sheet when you go to print and or you wanna keep your text and images that you wanna keep about a quarter inch away from the edge. So that when you cut a giant stack of them on a pneumatic guillotine, you don't lose your headlines. Down below to bleed and slug. 
one of the things that I will get on the soapbox for over and over and over again is the importance of bleed. Remember that bleed in printing is the secret answer to the trick question, how do I print to the edge of my paper? Because the answer is, you don't. It's impossible to print to the edge of your paper accurately. You can't do it. It's like asking someone to make you a loaf of bread without crust. Make me a sandwich without crust, you say. And your mom says, sure, if she's feeling nice, if you've been acting good that day. And she'll make your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And she'll, she'll take her kitchen knife and cut the crust off the edges. This is the same method you use to, do, to make printing to the edge of the paper. Since we can't actually print to the edge, we print bigger than we need and we cut off the excess. Standard industry uh, amount is one eighth of an inch. I can type that in or I can do the elevator buttons. I call them use the arrows or click up and down. 0.125 is industry standard. If you watch my screen, you can see as it's showing my uh, stuff getting smaller, but it's not actually making it smaller. I have my computer set to showing full screen image. So as I make the bleed larger in order to show it and the page, it has to shrink my view, but the actual size is the same. Anyways, an eighth of an inch is correct. You can unchain these and say, oh, let's make this point 0.875 out here. And that way, one of them, if you scroll over, you can see one of them is bigger than the others. That is possible. There is a time and a place for this. When you're trying to tile multiple prints on top of each other, make a giant poster or a giant collage on a wall and you've reached the maximum size of a press, you can use this feature to help you overlap your prints. But anyways, let's just go back to normal and 0.125 all the way around, and that's it. This is how you set up a document. But I promised you, you know what, this is not really helping much, to show you. Da, thanks Zoom. I promised to show you what the facing pages does. So let me do this. And first off, let me show you something else on the way, because this is also useful. Once you've made your page, it's very easy to change it. You can go through the menus and it's file, document setup or shift command P for you Mac users out there. And if you need to translate that to Windows and don't worry, say Abla Windows, you need to do control, control, it's alt control. Yeah, alt shift P, sorry. As Apple option P, not Apple shift P. I don't know why I said that. Apple option P or control alt P. Anyways, when you do that, that calls up, hey, look, the setup window's back. I've already made my document, but here it is again. So I'll make this to a smaller size to make life a little bit easier to see, just for, for view's sake. Make it so we can see what we're doing here. Cool. Let's make pages, two pages, three, four. Four pages facing. Now you see I built this kind of Tetris block looking thing here. And if I go back and I change that to not facing pages and I say, okay, you know, I can see my four pages are lined up on top of each other. This does not make very big of a difference. There is one minor difference that we'll talk about later in the semester when we get more detailed on output. But overall, when you make this into a PDF or you send it to press and you're printing four pages, it's just gonna make the same four pages. If you put them together with facing pages, it makes it easier to do crossovers. If you want pictures to go from one side of the page to the other side, it's much easier with facing pages. But again, like everything else in here, this is designed to help the user not to constrain you. Anyways, I hope this has been helpful and not too rambly and uh, good luck on your projects.